Welcome to Taco Tuesday, or just Tuesday for some of us. Uh, I'm Stephen Lewis, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at Stephen Lewis on air, and radio, my jam. Uh, but talking about pop culture, movies, sports, things going on in the world, that's also fun too. So that's where life as we know it comes in, or life as I know it, or, you know, collectively. So uh, it's been a minute since I've done one of these. Part of that because I was a reluctant morning show host for a long time. And while I had fun, I will go back to the fact that I was a reluctant host for a long time. Last couple of weeks uh, has reinvigorated my love for morning radio. So it's been good. But I come to you on this June 27th because uh, we have a new Superman. Amidst the failure of DC, which we'll get to in a moment... Uh, we have a new Superman, and it is uh, an interesting casting choice. I, for one, loved Henry Cavill, but let's start from the beginning. Both Henry Cavill and Brandon Routh, I think, were both two great casts uh, that were just a slave to bad material, unfortunately, especially in the case of Cavill. Uh, I think he was really had the look, had the feel of Superman, but just the material didn't resonate with everybody. But we'll get to that coming up uh, in a little bit. But first, if you've ever seen Hollywood on Netflix, then you might know Daniel Cornsweet. He is your new Superman. They are definitely going younger or skewing younger. He'll be joined by Rachel Broshanan, who is from The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Uh, she'll be your new, new, new Lois Lane. Uh, both of them seem like they're pretty cool. They look like they could fit the part. I'm kind of bummed because Tyler Hoechlin and Bitsy Tulloch are my favorite incarnation. I love Superman and Lois. That show is the best Superman I have ever seen on TV and arguably uh, might be better than the movies too. Hoechlin does a good Superman, so I'm bummed to see that next year will be his last year in the role, at least for now anyway. But So Superman Legacy will be done by James Gunn, who you might know from... Guardians of the Galaxy. He's the dude that's in charge of DC now, and I do think that he will bring the right tone to Superman, because I think the mistake that they made with, uh, in a way, Brandon Rolfe, but more so with Cavill, they were coming off the success of the Dark Knight trilogy from Christopher Nolan, so everything has to be dark, and Superman's not a dark character. He is the light by which they all look up to. He is the best of all of them, so he shouldn't be dark and brooding, so I'm good with Gunn in the director's chair. Uh, some of the other things I don't agree with, like either reboot everything and clean house, uh, don't pick and choose. So like Momoa is going to stick around. Gal Gadot looks like she's going to stick around. We don't know what's going to happen with Ezra Miller, but we'll get to that here in a minute too. But you're going to clean house on Affleck. He, Gunn did come out and say after this casting news that we're miles and miles away from a new Batman. Which, if you're going to do an older Batman, I've said it before, keep Ben Affleck and build from there. But, you know... A lot to still play out. Uh, all this become, comes because, well, DC failed at the box office. And they shouldn't have, but it was just a bunch of mistakes that they couldn't get out of their own way. It started with Man of Steel was a promising start. A lot of people don't like the fact that Superman snaps his odds neck in his end. Spoiler alert! movie came out in 2012, 2013, so if you haven't seen it already, Zod, Superman kills Zod, snaps his neck to save a family. But despite that... Cavill was great as Superman, Kevin Costner was Jonathan Kent. Uh, it was cast really well for the most part. The only problem was the material. Not everybody, it doesn't resonate with everybody. So when they announced Batman vs. Superman, the fact that that didn't make a billion dollars is just everything you need to know about why DC failed. But I think a lot of it was they kind of looked at what Marvel did and went, hmm, we got to catch up. Uh, but they did it too quickly. Marvel took 10 years to get to Avengers Endgame. And now they're suffering because, you know, it's going to take another three or four to establish where they're going to get to their second version of Endgame. Do I think they'll get there? Yeah, but it's going to be some growing pains. DC just went, man, we can do this too. Let's get a Justice League going right away. So they crammed... You had enough with just Batman versus Superman. You didn't have to throw in the death of Superman, the Dark Knight Returns. You just all these things that you did all at once, and it was just too much. And then with Justice League, man, you just you united. It was a good cast for the most part. I never liked Ezra Miller. I just never have. But beyond that, you had a pretty strong cast. Yet Justice League couldn't 
you know, get its fair justice at the box office. And it just kind of steamrolled from there where, you know, if you look at the box office returns for how much money was put into these things, it just didn't work. And so you have to reboot. But The Flash was an example of how bad it didn't work. And there could be a couple of reasons why. Uh, Ezra Miller obviously has some drama outside. And he's a pretty shady, or they're a pretty shady group of people. And he, what he did, he should pay for. And it's tough to get around that. And I think the other problem they had is somebody on Twitter posted the entire movie of The Flash and 1.7 million views before it was pulled down. So that's going to hurt the box office a little bit. Uh, but other than that, it tried to rely on nostalgia, which didn't work. So you, con you combine the fact of Ezra Miller's drama with the fact that they're rebooting the universe. So you have that, ah, well, we don't really need to watch these. We don't care anymore. And you get kind of the recipe for a box office failure. Affleck was good in the beginning. Michael Keaton, it was cool to see him. But I still stand by my earlier point. As cool as that nostalgia was, I don't know that his Batman or his version of Batman fits right in this universe. I think he would have been better served if he were brought back as a Batman, an older Bruce Wayne and Batman Beyond. 90s kids know exactly what I'm talking about when I say Batman Beyond. But it just... Uh, you couldn't rely on nostalgia alone. There's some weak plot points. The CGI was awful. The whole baby thing in the beginning. And then, you know, like, somebody brought up a plot point the other day that's glaring. Okay, Ezra Miller knew about kryptonite. Why didn't you go find a bunch of kryptonite to fight all the kryptonians? That would have made your life a heck of a lot easier. But, you know, they, they get past that. And it just, while it was cool to see Batman back in the form of Michael Keaton, it just wasn't enough. And the Clooney thing at the end... You know, it's tongue-in-cheek funny, but it doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense. I know they said they tried to get Christian Bale, and he just flat-out said no multiple times, which, you know, if Bale's Batman would have been in it, would have been better? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it would have been a more a fresher take, bringing that Batman back, but who knows? I think at the end of it, they had the perfect opportunity, if they wanted to, to introduce whoever was going to be playing Batman moving forward, but obviously they haven't cast him yet to put him in that movie. Uh, so Disney's going to be in for a rough, or D Disney, DC's going to be in for a rough year or so, because Aquaman in December is probably going to fail, and Blue Beetle, um, you know, not a household name per se, so so we'll see. We've got a new Superman, we've got a new Lois Lane, and we'll get more casting uh, down the road. Nicholas Holt is rumored to be Lex Luthor. That could be pretty cool. Uh, but I think the end of the day, the Warner Brothers TV, the Berlantiverse or the Arrowverse or whatever, did the best version of that universe that I think we'll ever see. Despite not being able to use characters like Batman and Wonder Woman and Green Lantern, they had a pretty cool collective universe going. Arrow was a decent show. Uh, the Flash ran for nine seasons, five of which were pretty good. Supergirl started out with a lot of promise and got kind of hokey in the end. But for the most part, if you were a fan of seeing all these superheroes at once, despite the cheesy costumes and everything else, uh, the Berlantiverse did the best version of DC that probably this generation will remember. So Gunn's got his hands full. We will see what happens down the road. Uh, that's what I got tonight. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday evening. Go spend it with people you like, love, or tolerate because time... Well, it's limited. Get out of here.